Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. To talk about network disaggregation and why it is so important to telcos, I'm now joined by Arvin Siena, who is the VP and Head of Technology Strategy and Transformation Office at PLDT and Smart Communications. Hi Arvin, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. So why is network disaggregation so important and why are you pushing for open run? Well, in my company situation is very different no, from, from other companies here in, in, the, in, in the Europe. No? So we really are um, challenged with cost. No? Uh, our market is price sensitive and our market is predominantly prepaid. So we, had, we have to find ways how to be more cost effective in our infrastructure, especially in wireless network. Because we have about 73 million uh, customers and um, the quality of experience is something that we truly uh, put into our heart. No? And every day, uh, or our network KPIs, we look at that and we make sure that we are always at the best. And Because every change or every downturn of, of, of this uh, quality of service may impact our revenue. So moving forward, we're trying to find ways how we can come up with solutions where we maintain our quality of experience or mostly make it best or better um, while we are changing you know, and evolving our infrastructure. So disaggregation is very, very important for us because this is the way to move forward. This, is, this will make us uh, agile in offering new capabilities, thereby creating new revenue. And um, Open Run, as uh, you mentioned, is something that is promising too many opportunities for us to be more cost efficient and improve our process. So that's why we are very much involved with, with NGMN in defining the future. Uh, of uh, disaggregation. How do you see disaggregation impacting operating models of telcos? Uh, very good question. So it will change the way we do business today. It will change our entire operational infrastructure. It will change our processes. It will change the way we um, procure equipment. It will change the mindset of the people. So it will totally overhaul the entire, you know, ecosystem of uh, um, of run or radio access network. All of a sudden, there will be new um, operators, or sorry, there will be new vendors, no, small and big vendors interoperable with each other, and there will come a time that we, as an operator, will just pick and choose. But the challenge for us is really on the system integration. We have to integrate it, no. And uh, that is something that we have to uh, do, start doing, uplifting our human capital, the capability of our people. I mean, we have to be ready. It will not be there in probably in the next two years, but we have to start the groundwork today. We have to start small steps towards making it happen for us. And does Open Run come with any security risks? And if so, how are you trying to prevent them? Of course, uh, every changes in the infrastructure, every changes in the network will definitely um, pose security risk. But it will, in itself, it will come, you know, cybersecurity solutions uh, will come. No, um, we, cannot, we cannot stop because there are potential threats, no? because there are potential, uh, you know, loopholes. No? While we evolve our infrastructure, we believe, and there's a lot of big push also in that industry, cybersecurity industry, to in, in improve no? the security posture, the security infrastructure, especially so that uh, we are virtualizing. No? We, are making sure, we are making the layer, we're opening up the layer for a lot of other vendors. And natively uh, to the infrastructure will come no? uh, with it a security mechanism to protect not only ourselves, not only our network, but all, most importantly, our customers. No? Data privacy is also a big part of that, not only cybersecurity. So where is Smart Communications on its open run journey at the moment? Well, we have started small steps. No? Um, in 2015, we have uh, established 
foundational activities no we have, st we have started the groundwork uh, in order to be ready no uh, for 2020 and beyond no and in 20, 2015 we planned to be ready uh, for 5G in 2020 and it happened no we were able to launch 5G now we're replanning again for the next 5 to 10 years no so the readiness for us um, we may not be ready today but we have started the groundwork we have started the virtualization of our core infrastructure uh, and then we are moving towards network function uh, virtualization infrastructure um, um, direction that it's going to be a multi-vendor environment and uh, of course the 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 next thing is about cloudification no? running all this network function or workflow in the cloud it could be a telco cloud or it could be a public cloud so it's a it's again another big debate but uh, uh, it's a good argument to have at this point in time no? not later but at this point in time and where do you stand on public versus private cloud we have t still have uh, an internal argument no it, it's very difficult to say today that we will be on a public cloud. That is a very, um, that, that direction is something that we have to have. No? Um, moving forward, uh, the, um, uh, we hope no? that for us to, be, to, be, to make it more cost efficient, no? public cloud will play an important role. No? But uh, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. So it's something that we will discover along the way together with the other friends in the, the NGMN. Arvin, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. Thank you, my pleasure.